Yes guys, welcome back to the Hashtag United Esports channel and today I'm bringing you another squad builder. If you remember last week, Shuri here brought you a 150k, was it? 100k? 100k mate. 100k on. squad builder. Keeping the budget here. But now we're going for a higher budget. We're going to be bringing you a 500k for the guys that have been playing a bit of weekend league, got a few coins stacked up. We've seen it in the comments, few people asked for a 500k, so we are bringing it to you. So also a few of you guys let us know in the comments of my 100k squad builder, how you guys did. And special shout out to Addy underscore ZTV, I believe, you know, I hope that's how you say it. You've definitely um, butchered that. Uh, he said he finished 20 and 8 with the team and said it went well for him. So, you know, what can I say, mate? Just make good squads. You know what I mean? But what I can tell you is mine is better. The 500k team will produce better results, mainly because I'm at an advantage to Shuri anyway. Five times the price. It is five times the price. <laughs> Actually, I can tell you it was 473k. So, you've even got an extra 25k spare. But yeah, with no further ado, let's get into it. You've put pressure on yourself now because it has to be down to the coin. 25k? Cool, mate. 20, 25 roughly. Right. So, in goal, we're going to go for Sommer. He's a solid keeper, always comes walking out of packs. You always see him. Most people end up just selling him or leaving him the club for SBCs. But I think he could actually be a good keeper. He also has a strong link to our centre half, Ian Akinje. Got a lot of pace, strength, and good defending, which is mainly what you're looking for in a centre back for me. Agility can matter at times, but I think 69 is good enough, to be honest. I don't think. That's the biggest stat. It's more about how quick they are, how um, good they are at defending, and how strong they are. At left back, we've got his Dortmund partner, Schultz, who is one of the quickest fullbacks in the Bundesliga, I believe. Basically, the main thing with fullbacks is they need to be quick. Most teams you're gonna come across in weekend league will have fast wingers and players that wanna get in behind your defense. The main stat I'm looking for is the pace. I mean, yeah, defending is important. Obviously, strength as well in a defender again. But rule number one, they have to be quick. So we're going for shorts in there. And on the other side of the defense, we're gonna go for Cully Bally. Relatively quick, extremely tall if I'm right. Yeah, coming in at six foot two. Great defending stats in terms of standing tackle. As manual defending seems to be more rewarding in this game. He'll do a great job in there. His fullback next to him is actually Malqui. Again, same criteria for a fullback. We're looking at quick players in here. Jumping isn't too important this year. Obviously FIFA 19, the fullbacks are all about how tall you are and if you can head the ball. But that's definitely not the case on FIFA 20. Um, even if attackers win the headers, they don't seem to get there. So I wouldn't worry too much about his jumping. After building a solid back five, we need two players in there that are going to be able to tackle and also a box to box, which leads me to Matuidi as our next player. Good physical and defending. Obviously, he's going to be a holding midfielder. We don't really need goals out of him, so I wouldn't worry about the shooting stat too much. Always good value for coins in FIFA. So Matuidi partnered with Musa Sissoko, um, probably my favourite player as a Spurs as a Spurs fan. Musa Sissoko would be my favourite player in this team. I actually use him in my team um, at the moment, and he's definitely doing the job. Box to box, it mainly is tackling, that's his best stat to be honest. He's always winning them 50-50 duels in there. And even though his shooting's not great, I've been hitting a few with him. If you get him at a right angle, he can hit it, but mainly his job is to tackle and set the ball off five yards. That's what I'd recommend doing with him. Get the ball, give it to the other players further forward that can do more damage. Which leads me to our front four. For me personally, I know Lacazette is a striker. Kills me having him in the team, by the way, as a Spurs fan, but... On Ultimate Team, things have to be done. I would personally play him as a 10, just because I don't think he's got the pace in behind to cause damage. However, he's got decent passing stats. He can get a shot off. Shot power's good, finishing good. For me, I really like quick dribblers that can turn left and right to force that little bit of space for a pass. So that's why Lacazette's in there. Then he's gonna have pace either side of him. The first one on the right side, I think this is now his third FIFA of being an unreal player, Lozano. Probably mentioned it before, but pace is key in FIFA 20. Getting in behind the fullbacks, is a major key. And Lozano is gonna be able to do that with 93 pace. He's gonna be getting in behind at will. He can also finish. I know his stats aren't great, but you know them players in FIFA sometimes where they might not have the base card to show how good they are, but in game, they are very, very good. Lozano is definitely one of them. And that is why on the other side, we've got another speed demon in Anthony Martial. I think it was FIFA 17, Martial was OP. Martial is another one of them cards, just like Lozano, where even if their base card doesn't look great, they're always sweaty players you use in weekend league that are gonna get you good results. The main role of Martial and Lozano is to get in behind, cause problems either for a cutback or if they're quick enough to get across the centre half as well and fire a shot off across goal. And they're two cards that even though they don't look great, 82 and 83 rating, um, they play better than they look. That is 100% the truth. To finish it all off is Mertens. Mertens had some really good cards in previous FIFAs as well. I think he's gonna be 
a top player again. As well as pace, you need players that are agile and can move around the box quickly to get a shot off because you're going to come across players that have got that bus parked. You know, they've got their 10 men sat in, two banks of four, their centre half isn't going to be touched and it's on you to try and get that touch away and get a quick shot off. There's no better player for this than Mertens. He can do both. He can run in behind if someone is playing a high line, but the main reason behind this is how agile he is. He's going to get there, he's going to get a quick shot off or a quick one-two, and he can finish as well. His shooting's good, 86 finishing. So you're probably wondering why the team isn't on full chemistry. As you can see in the top left, it's 83 chemistry. My Sissoko is a striker because that's how I use him in my formation, but obviously with this 500k team, we'd apply position changes to him to get him to a central midfielder. It's also the same case for Mertens, who you'd have to withdraw. You'd have to take him from a centre forward to a cam, to a centre mid, to a holding midfielder. Uh, you need him set up in the 4-3-3-3, and you'll have one player off chemistry in Akanje. He'll be on seven or eight chemistry, depending on management choice. One player on eight chemistry won't affect his game style too much. And now I'll show you a couple of possibilities you could use for this 500k team in games. The first formation I'm going to recommend to you is the FIFA 19 special, the 4-2-3-1. Uh, it's basically the narrow variation. So the key for this is balance. The 4 2 3 one offers you a balanced defense and a balanced attack. You're going to have the four guys in defense, not really pushing forward. You're not looking for them to create chances for you. And you're going to have Matuidi and Sissoko sitting in front and basically acting as hoovers or screeners, whatever you want to call them, in front of your back four. They're going to be nicking the ball and they're going to be letting the front four excel. You have two ways to attack with your front four. You can either play on the counter attack and hoping that speculative through balls can work. Or you have to slowly build up from the back, working your way forward for these nimble, quick strikers to work an opportunity around the box, either with a quick one-two, a drag back, a skill move they're not expecting. It's the main way of attacking with them. Uh, but as I say, the key word in a 4-2-3-1 is definitely balance. Don't rush it too much, otherwise this formation isn't suited for that sort of gameplay. Another formation you could use with this team is the 4 triple 2 I would mainly recommend this for players that like to play on the front foot and create chances at will. The back four, same as usual. I wouldn't expect chances out of these guys. Don't set them on join the attack. They're not going to be the ones that will create the goals for you. The two in midfield, probably the same job as a 4-2-3-1. However, they will be further forward, even if you put stay back whilst attacking on. It's just the way the formation works. I like to play one of these midfielders in a sort of box-to-box -box role. Probably Sissoko for this one. I would have him in a more box-to-box -box role. I wouldn't keep him on stay back whilst attacking. I'd actually let him link the midfield to the attack. And then have these two guys, Martial and Lozano. They can either go out wide... As they start as a cam, you'll probably find them in narrow pockets between the holding midfielder and the left back. But you can set them to either go out wide if you like to play that way, or you can tuck them in as well to sort of create an overload. The reason Lacazette's up front with Merton is when the two strikers are bouncing off each other, it's good to have agile players who are good dribblers like these two both are. To basically play quick one-twos and to get a shot off because not everyone is going to give you the space in behind. It's simple as that. Sometimes the thought of having two strikers occupying the two centre-backs is going to give your opponents something else to think about. So this formation is mainly for players who want to play on the front foot and if you're looking for a goal and you stick team press on, players are also very good because the two cams can stick onto the left back and right back. And this is my formation for winning the ball back in desperate situations. When you're 3-2 down you need that goal because it also leads to an overload um, when you nick the ball back. And I personally think this is my favourite formation at the minute, so I would definitely recommend this one. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do use this team, let us know in the comments what you got. What do you think you'd get? What, with this squad? Yeah, 500k team. Um, I, I'd give myself a 27, 28. 27, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think I'd go yeah, to top 100. Top 100, the aim, 500k team for us. But let us know how you got on in the comments below. We're going to be bringing out loads more content over the next few weeks, guys. We've got another qualifier coming up next week. So we'll do another vlog for that. We've got more squad builders as well and more, you know, just great banter within the HQ. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like, subscribe. And until next time, what do we not forget to do, Shuri? Don't forget to hashtag it, boys. Yeah.